Hello friends. This is KRZ Orpon Root Hacker. I love Intel as much as anyone. They make cool products. They engage in lots of community stuff. But Matt, when it comes to confusing product naming schemes, I think Core i3, Core i5, Core i7 takes the cake. I'm a great question. What the heck does all of this even means? We will get to that. But first, bit of background about why we need product name for processors. Would not it be simpler of label them with how many gigahertz they run out? Call it a day simpler, short of, but at times actually even more confusing. For example, when the Pentium 4 launched an equivalently clock, Pentium 3 was actually faster because it could do more work with each cycle as a customer. I would expect the product with the higher number to be better one and therein lies the problem not all megahertz and gigahertz and great equally and rating products. That way is about like reading the performance of a car based on one tar and the engine runs that is not actually a real indication about fast the processors is but it happened that one of Mandis attempt to move away from this started in the early 2000s with their PR or performance rating naming scheme. When their processors were given a four-digit model number that enthusiasts believe was based on the performance and he felt what they delivered compared to an Intel CPU with that clock speed but this fixed nothing they were still anti clean aming according to clock speed it was not until Intel introduced the core series a lot of pus that dramatically outperform their processors at much lower clock that the megahertz war ended because Intel need to shift their making away from frequency. So here is what we have today other than the very bare bones Pentium SKUs a Core i3 will be your most basic option what two processors coarse and hyper threading for better multitasking it will have smaller cache it will consume less power it will generally perform worse than a Core i but it will cost less. Which leads us to the Core i5. I wish I could it was a simpale as well Core i3 is f2 cores and Core i live out for coarse equal minus. I will add the number after the little. I bet it is not mobi Core i5. I've had two cores and hyper threading well desktop ones mostly have four cores no hyper threading L but one they all have in common is improved on but graphics and turbo. Boost more about this fracture here for temporary performance enhancements when the system is a little bit more and what a knock ne mind core i7 number one all core i7 slash have hyper threading for heavy workloads and number two it hits the house your brain as I finish my explanations. Here a Core i7 can have anywhere from 2 processing core in an ultrabook all the way up to 8 in a workstations it might support anywhere from 2 sticks of memory. All the TDP anywhere from around 10 words all the way to 130 watts so there is a ton of variety here and that's for a various here that is for reasons. For i7 tend to have more case faster turbo boost and better on but graphics than the lower processors and I guess other than that. The beat summary I can give is this equal i7 represents the beat things Intel could build for a given use case with the biggest drawback being the highest price tag. So when you bail it down that are all the I want ever number represented good better best. Within a give segment beyond that on their own they are pretty much meaningless the number and better afterwards sort of means so nothing. Thanks for if you watching, ask the guide from before but the safest like way to like shop like is unlike to dig around dislike. in arc and look the features for cunts and clock speeds of the CPU. You are comparing to finger out how they stack up with the good news being that as long as you compare within one brand within the same product generation those metrics will actually mean something.